major depression is a commonly occurring and seriously impairing disorder, which is distinct from unhappiness or typical feelings of sadness. Symptoms of depression include depressed mood, anhedonia, which is an inability to feel pleasure, feelings of worthlessness or guilt, suicidal ideation, which could be a plan or attempt, fatigue or loss of energy, sleep decrease or increase, weight or appetite decrease or increase, a decreased ability to think or concentrate, what we call indecisiveness, and psychomotor agitation. Projections have speculated that depressive disorders will become the leading cause of disability-adjusted life years lost by the year 2030. During COVID-19, the prevalence of depression skyrocketed to 25%, and it's reasonable to expect that the burden of depression will continue to place high demands on the healthcare system as well as compromise the quality of life in our communities. Women have a lifetime risk of major depressive disorder roughly twice as high as men, and this gender gap is increasing among adolescents. Mental health issues among teenagers are a growing problem that warrants substantial public health attention. And while there's many causes of declining mental health, this video discusses the possibility that nutrition is a contributor as well as a potential solution to many forms of depression. At Wise Mind Nutrition, we examine health and disease through a biopsychosocial model, which integrates lenses of biology, psychology, and social and environmental contexts. Biology of depression is complex, and there's no single model that could fully explain all aspects of its presentation. Biological factors for depression include the monoamine hypothesis, which is the primary basis for antidepressant medications the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which is responsible for the human stress response via cortisol, neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, which facilitates resilience against stress, inflammation, which is the hot topic that we'll discuss further on, structural and functional brain changes, which are measured through neuroimaging studies, genetics, which investigates multiple genes termed polygenic, and epigenetics, which is modification of genes that do not alter the genetic code itself. The psychology of depression might even be more complex since it is more difficult to measure psychological pathways. One known contributor is early life adversity. Many of the biological aspects of depression are also consequences of early life trauma, but not all depression cases have origins in developmental processes. And putting it back into the context of nutrition, the experience of being stigmatized based on weight is a known contributor to depression. Efforts to diet can be extremely stressful and perpetuate a vicious cycle leading to weight gain and depression. One reason that the nutrition field is moving toward non-diet approaches. Body comparison through social media can also contribute to depression but this relationship has been suggested to be bi-directional, where depression can also lead to more social media use. Social and environmental factors of depression can include stressful life events, socioeconomic status, and the presence of social inequality. Environmental exposures, for example, airborne pollution, can also contribute to depression through several biological mechanisms. So clearly, there's multiple risk factors for depression and several potential avenues for treatment. The question is, can nutrition be a part of the solution? It's no secret that ultra-processed food consumption has risen steadily since 1980. You don't need me to report that data. Concerning rise in ultra-processed foods may be among minoritized youth in the United States. High quality longitudinal studies, ultra-processed food consumption increases the risk of developing depression. So, what can we do about it? It does feel important to point out that most of the work in this area has been done outside of the United States. Are you surprised? Australia, the UK, Canada, and South America have all done some groundbreaking work in the domain of nutrition for mental health, often referred to as nutritional psychiatry. To date, most research has used dietary supplements rather than food because it's much easier to draw conclusions about their impact by way of randomized controlled trials. From nutritional studies, we can add some additional pathways to the list of biological factors. Gut microbiota, which is the collection of microbes colonizing the gastrointestinal tract. Oxidative stress, 
which is related to inflammation. Mitochondrial dysfunction, which is responsible for energy production. Tryptophan kynurenine metabolism, which is related to the monoamine hypothesis and brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is related to synaptic plasticity. So here's a great summary of these potential pathways published by Marx et al. 2021. This figure proposes an interplay between dietary quality and implicated mechanisms in alleviating depression. Take a minute to let it all soak in. A common factor of depressive disorders is the production and overall effects of inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and C-reactive protein. The basis for this etiological hypothesis for depression is through disruption of the blood-brain barrier, which is caused by the convergence of oxidative stress and pro-inflammatory signaling. It's been suggested that a leaky gut can lead to a leaky brain. Is it time to focus on gut health for mental health? The evidence says yes. To date, the most studied dietary intervention for alleviation of depressive symptoms is the Mediterranean diet. No surprise there. A summary of the interactions between the Mediterranean diet and depressive disorders have been published in this excellent figure by Pano et al. 2022. Please take a minute to review how specific foods and food groups influence biological systems associated with depression. I was very pleased and excited to read the latest systematic review on this topic. To date, most studies showing links between nutrition and depression have been cross-sectional with only a handful of longitudinal studies. But fast forward 2022, there are now seven randomized controlled trials using dietary interventions for depression that met inclusion criteria for the systematic review. I was particularly impressed with their methodology because the studies used to assess whole food intervention had no intention of causing weight loss as an outcome. About time we focus on mental health outcomes rather than BMI. This is the future of nutrition. Furthermore, studies examining supplements such as fish oil or single micronutrients were also excluded. As humans don't consume micronutrients in isolation, it's more meaningful to consider the effects of whole foods and dietary patterns in relation to depression. Food finally gets the spotlight it deserves, or it's starting to. At the conclusion of the randomized control trials, all seven studies showed a statistically significant reduction in depressive symptoms. Wow. The interventions were dietary and included counseling and monitoring, ranging anywhere from 10 days to one year. The results collectively show promise for dietary interventions that are focused on eating whole foods rather than ultra processed foods. Are you surprised? In my opinion, future studies need to disentangle the types of fat used in the interventions rather than classifying as low fat versus high fat. We know that the consumption of high fat foods such as nuts, seeds, avocados, olives, coconuts are extremely beneficial for mental health. Therefore, this label of low fat can be misleading. Don't be misled. The authors concluded that consumption of high quality diets with anti-inflammatory properties and an increased supply of antioxidants may reduce systemic inflammation and oxidative stress, thereby potentially decreasing depressive symptomatology. Amazing. Nutrition is complex and multifactorial. Nutrition interventions hold great promise for some presentations of depression, particularly if the pathophysiology is rooted in inflammatory processes. The gut microbiota is likely to play an important role in the nutrition-depression connection through inflammatory processes as well as through the production of postbiotics, which we can all expect to learn more about soon. Mm. Nutrition interventions for depression may be particularly warranted among those who do not respond favorably to first-line medications. And for those that do, nutrition should be an adjunctive treatment. Do you agree? Why is my nutrition? We're here to support you in your quest for recovery. Our program utilizes evidence-based lifestyle interventions focused on nutrition to improve mood and brain health. Knowing what to eat is one thing, but knowing how to take the necessary steps to get there is a whole other challenge. And that's what we do. We're experts in nutrition-related behavior change, 
and are here to walk you through your journey one bite at a time.